In this system, we have two masses connected through a damper and a spring, and the mass M2 is subjected to a force F of T. Let's create the free body diagram for both masses, assuming that a displacement of mass M1 is X1 and the displacement of mass M2 is X2. The external force F of T is applied to M1. We can draw the external excitation force here as F of T on our free body diagram. As mass M2 moves now to the right, there are two forces that are pulling mass M2 back, and those forces come from the damper and the spring connected between masses M1 and M2. So you can now replace those components with the forces that they create. The spring here will create a force K2 times the relative compression of that spring, that is X2 minus X1. And the damper will create a force B, coefficient of viscous friction, times the relative velocity between masses M1 and M2, that is X2 dot minus X1 dot. These forces that are now applied to mass M2 will also be applied to mass M1. They have the same magnitude, but now they make mass M1 move to the right. So these two forces are exactly the same, same magnitude, but opposite direction. If now mass M1 moves to the right, mass M1 is connected to a spring that is connected to a fixed reference frame replacing the force that that spring creates gives us now the free body diagram for mass m1 the force here is the stiffness of that spring k1 times now the displacement of mass m1 that is x1 the other end of the spring is fixed so there is no displacement on the other end of the spring the total comp uh, compression or stretch of that spring is simply x1 now that we have all the free body diagrams, we can write the equations of motions for masses M1 and M2. Starting with M2, we know that sum of forces equals to Mx double dot for both masses. For mass M2, that will be F of T minus Bx2 dot minus X1 dot coefficient of viscous friction relative velocity across the damper minus k2 x2 minus x1 equals to m2 x2 double dot if you now look at mass m1 we are going to have here the same forces but now they go in the opposite direction so we have positive bx2 dot minus x1 dot this is that force right there plus k2 x2 minus x1 and that force here minus k1 x1 equals to m1 x1 double dot so basically, these are the two equations of motion for masses M1 and M2. Let's go one step ahead here and reconsider the problem as a function of velocity. Here we are giving the equations as a function of position, because position is the variable that we are interested in. But we could, in fact, express all these equations of motion with respect to any other variables, such as acceleration or velocities of masses M1 and M2. So let's assume that uh, we are interested in the position of mass M2, that is X2. But now let's replace the position of mass M1 with the velocity of mass M1, V1. We are now interested in the relation between V1 and X2, position and velocity. How would now these equations 
rearrange as a function of v1 instead of x1. Let's just start with equation 1 here. Let me actually let me call this equation 2 because this is for mass 2 and call this equation 1. Equation 2 could be rewritten now as f of t minus b x2 dot. Now, we here we have x1 dot. x1 dot is actually the velocity, is v1. Dot represents the first derivative of x with respect to time. So the derivative of position is the velocity. So we could simply write minus v1. minus k2 x2 and now here we have negative x1 minus x1 the displacement of mass m1 if you want now to express this as a function of speed or well, the relation between position and the speed the speed is a derivative if you integrate v1 we get x1 so time minus the integral of v1 dt equals to m2 x2 double dot. Now let's look at equation 1. We have b x2 dot minus v1. Now x2 dot is the, is the speed of mass m1, that's v1, or should say the velocity. Plus k2 x2 minus again integral of v1 dt minus k1 integral of v1 dt. All right, this is position, but we now we are interested in expressing everything with respect to velocity. Equals to m1. This is the acceleration of mass m1. The acceleration of mass m1, the second derivative of position. Or the first derivative of speed. So we can write this as m1 v1 dot. And here we have the same equations. But now the new set of equations here considers v1 as the variable for mass m1, so the velocity of v1, and here we have the displacement of mass m2.